Hey y'all, welcome back. So today we'll be reviewing another four problems from the Princeton University Science Olympiad Astronomy exam, um, astronomy review problems. I wrote all these questions, so if you have any concerns, uh, please leave it in the chat down below, um, and I'll get back to you. Uh, also, the answers and problems are available in the chat, uh, YouTube description link. Okay, let's get right into it. So we have an interstellar cloud with radius initial radius of five light years. Initial implies that there will be a final quantity we want to be concerning ourselves with, um, and so that's going to be a final radius of one light year. So the total cloud has a mat this mass, and it is given uh, the final rotational speed. That's what we want to find. So we can really quickly write, we want to find t final. That is our question mark. And so we need to think about how to go about this problem. Well, the question problem gives you a hint that you need to use conservation of angular momentum and assume the cloud is a solid sphere of inertia. Uh, given by this formula. Let's go ahead and uh, consider this problem. So let's draw a quick picture. Uh, first off, we have radius 5 light years, and it's a spherical cloud, so shaped like this, and this is all just going to be an interstellar cloud. Um, and then it goes down to a much smaller radius of 1 light years. Obviously, this isn't a scale, um, and it's going to look like that. Uh, okay, so we have our picture uh, drawn here. Both objects have some angular velocity given by, we can say, wi and wf, and that's the rotation rate. So let's go ahead and consider uh, the conservation of angular momentum. So the angular momentum of this first object is going to be L equals iw. That's your formula. And so we're going to write Li equals uh, I, uh, wi, which is going to be equal to, uh, using our equation, 2 over 5 m r i squared wi. Um, and let's do the same thing for this side of the equation. So uh, LF equals IWF, which that means that LF equals uh, 2 over 5 um, RF squared. That's a 5, sorry for the bad handwriting, times WF. Okay, so we want to set these two quantities equal to each other uh, to be able to solve further. Remember, we need T final, and so that's going to come into play when we think about these WI and WF terms. So let's go down a little bit. Um, I'm going to resize everything so that we have a little bit more room to work with over here. Uh, resize, let's put it like right there. Okay, so then we have, uh, let's zoom in a little bit. We have 2 over 5 m r i squared w i equals 2 over 5 m r f squared w f. Immediately, we see that these coefficients go away, 2 over 5. And then the mass doesn't change in this problem, that uh, interstellar gas slash cloud doesn't have any mass disappearing or going anywhere. So we, did, uh, we get this really simple and quite beautiful relationship that ri squared equals wi, uh, rf squared equals wf. This quantity, so let's go ahead and uh, let's do one more rewrite. So one thing you need to know about this type of problem is that w is equal to 2 pi over t. This is the definition of angular velocity. Um, you can, for a, a linear angular velocity, it's the same thing as d theta over dt. And in this case, we're considering one full period. So one period or one rotation rate. That's where we got this 2 pi over t expression from. So we're going to go ahead and substitute that into both sides of the equation. Uh, and we get ri squared is equal to 2 pi over ti is equal to rf squared and then 2 pi over tf. So again, we get these coefficients going away and we can solve for tf. So we get tf is equal to, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So we're going to bring that over, rf over ri squared times ti. Now that's our final expression, so let's plug in our values. So we found that the final radius is uh, one light year, if you go back to the problem stem, and the initial radius is five light years. So we're going to square that, and uh, if you go back to our time, we had a rotational period of 50 million years. So times that by 50 million. And if you do this in your calculator, well, uh, you see that this will become 1 over 25. So we're going to get a final answer. Let's erase it a little bit over here. Uh, we'll get a final answer of 50 divided by 25 equals 2 million years. So that's our answer. Let's see if that's amongst our answer choices. And it's right there. So we're good. OK, that's the answer. Uh, next question. So for this question, we're considering an astronaut orbiting 1,000 kilometers over the surface of an exoplanet. Uh, we have some exoplanet parameters of mass and its radius. 
And then we also have an upward, radially outward wind force of 200 newtons. Now we're going to consider circular motion. So this is a classic physics problem. You have that Fc equals mv squared over r. That's right, net. So we'll examine this question in a bit, but uh, before we do that, let's draw a quick picture. So we have an exoplanet right there. Uh, and then we have some astronaut orbiting. Uh, let's consider this to be the surface. Uh, that's going to be 1,000 kilometers here. Obviously, the picture is in a scale. And then this right here is going to be 8,000 kilometers. Okay, so then this total value of 9,000 kilometers is going to be r uh, that we're going to use in our equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and start computing this problem. Um, I think so. we have this side of the problem. We're trying to find, let's see, the tangential velocity. So we have r, we have m, so this is what we're solving for. So we need to know what the sum of the forces is going to be. Well, if we consider this uh, circular motion, we have two forces. So we have the F drag force right here. We're drawing a free body diagram, by the way. So F drag of 200 Newtons. And then here we have what is, let's see, uh, Fg. So this is the force of gravity supplied by the exoplanet. And so uh, we're going to write that Fc equals Fg minus F drag, which is equal to mv squared over r. So let's go ahead and uh, let's compute what Fg is. So if you guys don't know, Fg is going to be equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. Um, and we have all these values given by the problem. Okay, so uh, all that's really left to do from here is to solve for v and plug it into our calculator. So we have g m1 m2 over r squared minus F drag. Um, we know that F drag is 200 newtons. So we're just going to substitute that in right there, 200 newtons. Um, we could also write that as F drag, that's fine, F drag. Now we're going to multiply this by R, this term in the expression. We're going to divide it by M, this term in the expression, and then we're going to take the square root. So there's a bunch of math there, but you can go ahead and check out that this is the expression. And now we're going to plug this into our calculator. Um, so let's go ahead and rewrite some of this so that it's much easier to see. Uh, shoot, let's not get the picture in there though. Resize, bring it down there. Okay, perfect. So we'll go ahead and multiply some numbers here. So R is going to be given by uh, 9,000 kilometers. So don't forget to convert to units. 9,000 times 1,000. Uh, yeah, yeah, 9,000 times 1,000 multiplied by 6. 0.67 times 10 to the negative 11 multiplied by 70 kilograms for the person and then we also have uh, 0.7 earth masses so that's going to be 0.7 times 6.0 times 10 to the 24th this has units of kilograms just so we can remember uh, we're going to divide this term right here by what's it called uh, r squared so 9,000 times 1,000 squared uh, let's go ahead and move this a little bit to the left so we have a little more visibility. Um, this 9,000 times 1,000 is also going to distribute to our 200 Newton force uh, right here. So let's make sure that this will go here and then it'll go here as well. Don't forget the minus sign. And then finally, we're going to divide square root right here by uh, 70 kilograms. So plugging this into your calculator, you'll get that... Uh, that's just V regular. You'll get that V is about 2,300 meters a second, which is amongst your answer choices, answer choices right here. So your answer is A. Um, let me know, I kind of went by that a little quickly, but the calculation does work out if you plug everything in here and do the unit conversion. Um, so that'll be okay. By the way, this was the mass of the Earth. We had this symbol we used up here. This is the symbol over Earth masses. Okay, let's move on to the next question. This question is a bit lighter. Um, we see two stars, so let's draw a quick picture. Uh, this is our observer O, this is S1, this is S2, and we want to determine the distance between them. So it's going to be this. So it looks like we're drawing a triangle, actually. Uh, so we're going to find, we're going to use the law of cosines to find the distance between the two stars. Um, we have an angle of 30 degrees measured here, and we have their parallax angles. Okay. So if you guys don't know, parallax is a technique we use in astronomy to find the distance to nearby objects. 
um, the distance to an object through its parallax angle uh, is d equals 1 over p, where d is going to be in parsecs, so that's units of pc. Uh, it's a unit of distance, very big. And then p is measured in arc seconds, which is this symbol right here. So we already have the units that are very convenient for us. So then we can say that d1 is equal to uh, 1 divided by 0 0.4. I believe that's 25 pc. And then d2 is equal to 1 divided by uh, 0.06. And let's use this in our into our calculator because I'm not sure if I would get the results right away. Okay, 16.667. Yeah, that makes sense. Parsecs. Okay, so let's just uh, reflect that on our little picture. 25 pc. This is going to be 16.67 pc. Okay, cool. So all we have to do now is find the distance between uh, between the two stars, which is this length right here. So to go about doing that, let's use the law of cosines. So if you all don't remember, the law of cosines is given by c squared. Uh, let's go ahead and erase this for now. Okay, let's write it here. c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c, where the c angle is going to be our 30 degrees right there. So if we were to label up this little diagram, we would have C, A, B, uh, where we define the sides, signs. You can uh, you obviously switch these two, but it's fine. Okay, so let's go about uh, computing this. So we're going to have C squared is equal to going to be 25 squared plus 16.67 squared minus 2 of 25, 16.67, cosine of C, cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. So then we can type in root 3 over 2 right here. And so we're going to take the square root of this quantity right here to get our final answer. So I guess we should copy that over. Uh, copy. Let's paste it. Beautiful. Take the square root. And when you do that computation, I believe you get 13.5 parsecs. Um, let me double check that real quick. 25 squared plus minus 2 times 25 times 16.67 times root 3 by 2 square root. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so C equals about 13.45 PC. And that's your answer. Okay, final question. So we have this question. Uh, some astronomer obtains this light curve, uh, and we want to find the distance to the star using the distance modulus. We have this graph given here. So before we even bother with the graph, uh, let's first think about what the distance modulus is. So the way I like to write this equation is that the distance to a star in parsecs is given by 10 m minus m plus 5 divided by 5. This is your apparent magnitude, and this is your absolute magnitude. Those are two distinct quantities. Um, okay, so this is what we're going to use in distance. So first, let's find what the apparent magnitude is. So in this graph, we have a graph of apparent magnitude, so this should be pretty easy to obtain. I'm going to take the middle value. Um, even if you were to use the maximum value or minimum value here, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't mess up. You wouldn't get the a wrong answer. Um, it would be too far out of bounds. So it's appropriate to use the, right, uh, it's appropriate to use the middle value. Um, okay, so we're going to use 15 for m. And then so m equals 15. Uh, let's just call it mag. It's unit, unitless. And now we need m. Well, our problem statement gives us that m is given by this equation. So let's write it down. And then uh, the equation is in terms of p, where p is your period. So first, let's find out what the period is, and then we'll plug it into this equation. Um, so if we're going to look at this picture, period is going to be the amount of time for it to complete one uh, like cycle. And if we trace our pen, we find that to be about 10 days, uh, just using the graph. You could do any two peaks. It would be about 10 days. So let's go ahead and say that p is equal to 10. p is equal to 10, since m is equal to negative 2.73 log 10 of p, which is 10 right here, minus 1. So log of 10, log base 10 of 10 is just going to return 1. So then m is equal to negative 2.73 minus 1 equals negative 3.73. So yeah, we have all the elements to compute this problem and finish it off. Uh, let's go ahead and move this information to the side. 
all of it preferably. Okay, cool. So then we have D is equal to 10 to the 15 plus 3.73. That's based on the double negative here, negative here, negative here. And then we're going to add 5 and divide by 5. And so when you do this computation, you'll get that D is about, I want to say, 5600 parsecs, which is this answer right here. Okay, thank you everyone. That's our astronomy review for today. If you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments below. Um, otherwise, keep learning.